and I couldn't walk in the last few months. I feel like throwing them off the balcony and I live on the 21st floor, okay? When you have your husband, then he always with his phone. In today's episode, we are going to discover how pregnancy and childbirth can challenge your body in more ways than one. I am your host Pauline and welcome to TAW Real Chats. If you haven't yet done so, hit the subscribe button. Um, so you never miss helpful content like this. With me today are three lovely mummies. First up is a lady no stranger to those of us who love our cafes, co-owner of Yellow Brick Road, the Red Bean Bag, Wizards and Smooshy Juice. Please welcome Lynn! Hi everyone, I'm Lynn. I'm a um, mother of an uh, eight and a half month old baby. Um, I had it by CSEC and it's a pleasure to be here. Yay! Welcome, Lynn. And next up, we have Tini, the graphic designer from Seberang Parai. Hi. And all the mainlanders of Penang say woohoo! Hi, hi. My name is Fatini Amira. I'm a mother of, I think, Mikael of 10 months old, baby. Uh, I got him by emergency scissors. Ah, great, great. And last but not least, the bravest of us all, for she has not one, but four kids. The dentist from Pataling Jaya, Priscilla Chan. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Priscilla. I have four children. Um, I had the first one by cesarean, emergency cesarean section. He's 16 years old now. The second one by uh, induced vaginal birth. Uh, she's 13. And the last two, who are now 10 and 8, um, I had them by a completely natural uh, vaginal birth. Wow. Now, I'm really excited today because we are going to be chatting about what happened to our bodies after giving birth. Um, not just about things like weight gain or water retention. We're going to tackle the hardcore stuff, right, ladies? Um, you know, we have symphysis, pubis dysfunction, postpartum dis depression and more. And topics that are not commonly spoken enough here in Malaysia and in many parts of um, Asia. This episode of Real Chats is brought to you by Higgs. With over 50 sauces, paste and dried seasoning powder and certified halal, Higgs is the cooking solution for every busy mother. Stay home, stay safe, Higgs always with you. Um, Lynn, you've had Dacovane syndrome. What, did it, what is that exactly? Well, Dacovin syndrome is basically, um, it's a painful condition that um, affects the tendons of the thumb side of your wrist. So it's it's really common in pregnancy and um, in, 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 you know, postpartum and prepartum because it's so common that it's actually nicknamed mummy's thumb, the syndrome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's, it's quite common but, and it hurts when you turn your wrist or you grasp anything or you make a fist. So my hands and my feet were already so swollen from the pregnancy. Um, and this kind of made, this was like a painful condition that I had um, that made it difficult to do very simple things like opening mm. jars or, or just mm. basic things like, you know, like cutting an apple and stuff like that. Yeah. Ouch, mm. it sounds really painful. Um, Priscilla, do you have something similar? Yes, I did. Um, it was after my fourth one and I rocked him to sleep a lot. So I carried him in an awkward position and he was resting like that. And um, yeah, like uh, Lynn said, it, it's a very painful wrist and even like washing dishes would uh, cause pain, couldn't uh, twist my wrist. And finally, I saw a, a friend who is an orthopedic um, hand specialist. He gave me a steroid jab. I, I don't really know what he gave me. <laughs> um, and uh, after that, he told me no more carrying your baby to sleep. He was a big, heavy baby. And uh, yeah, by that time, he was already more than a year old, actually. And I was still rocking him to bed. My fault. <laughs> Last baby, you see. So uh, yeah, then after I just chucked him on the bed to sleep and uh, it resolved and never came back. Mm. Lina, yeah. are you still experiencing the pain? No, thankfully it went away two to three months postpartum. Um, so I'm lucky because it's actually very common uh, to have it throughout the whole time you're having a baby because you're carrying the baby, um, like Priscilla said, and, and it, it provokes it even more and more. So I was lucky because it went away after I, I gave birth. 
Right. Yes. So, so when you were having it, did you have to give up anything that you really like doing? I am a musician as well, um, and so I couldn't play my violin. Um, it's, I mean, music is quite an important part of my life, and I think that was one thing that um, affected me a lot um, because I couldn't. Uh, you know, it was locked down as well at that time. So I couldn't even pick up the violin because there was pain in my hand. Um, mm. And so I was stuck at home, um, pregnant with a dodgy wrist <laughs> and, and pregnant like, and, and with, with water retention and everything. So yeah, it was, it was quite a tough time. Wow. And, and you had that um, um, three to four months um, after giving birth. Now, for those of you who follow Lin, you'll know that she's one of the co-founders of Wicked Music People, a brilliant initiative by our local musicians. Lin, not having, not being able to play the violin like after you had you know, you've given birth and we were in lockdown and, and all of that, um, w w did, did that make you like feel really, really down? Yeah, it did because I mean, it's music is such an important part of my life. So I felt like I had lost my identity a little bit. Um, I used to be a really active person. So, you know, I, I have multiple businesses. I used to be running around all the time, uh, managing the businesses and weekends. I would go and busk in malls and stuff like that. So, but of course, when you're pregnant <laughs> and when you've got injuries, you know, you're just lying in bed making sure that the baby is all right so day in day out um with that change of lifestyle i think it it affected me um mentally and also physically so i felt mm -hmm. like um you know i didn't have a purpose anymore other than give birth to this child um so yes i i was quite affected by, by the whole thing fatini did you um experience a lot of anxiety as a mother Yes, I do have anxiety a lot after I'm giving birth. So I'm crying like every every time something hurt because this is this is our, my first being a, a mom. So it's like everything I do by my own. Mm -hmm. So it's like a struggle, you know, when you have when you have your husband and uh, he always with his phone and games and everything. So. For me, it's like I'm doing all this alone without you help me, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. like that. So sometimes I do feel like I want to kill myself. That's why I cut my hand. Luckily, my husband saved me. So it's like sometimes I feel like I'm useless. I don't have anything. I I can't do anything. I don't have the life anymore since I'm being since I being. Mother, so I can. It's like before I be a mother, you can like go anywhere. We can uh, enjoy our life. I can do. I can play phones. I can do everything like uh, le parking, something like that. Mm -hmm. So after I be a mom, I feel like the well, you know the tango jawa is so hard for me mm -hmm. to carry because this is my first time. So I'm not sure why why this happened to me, but. Every time, you know, we, we always like uh, view everyone's story, Instagram story. So I do feel like why everyone can be happy but not me. Mm. So I, I feel like everyone is, they have their happy life with their family, their husband and their uh, baby. But then my friends text me. She say she also feel the same. So it's not only me. Mm. So my, my husband also... It's actually, I'm too, I'm not sure, terlalu pikir something bad, I think. Mm -mm. So, it's not my husband's fault. It's mine because I'm thinking too much. I'm thinking like I can't do everything. I, I, I feel like, it's actually, it's not good because we think that way. Because it's hard for our baby, right? Mm -hmm. I keep on crying in front of my baby. So, it's, it's something like, I'm not sure it's... Uh, you're feeling really down and, and at the same time you feel guilty for feeling down yeah every time every time i feel every time I'm crying every time i stay in my uh, bathroom i keep crying too hard then i'm thinking of my baby mm -hmm. i feel why i'm being like this i'm a mother i need to be strong for my baby why i'm thinking so much about it mm -hmm. i'm not sure why this anxiety keep keep 
like ganggu me lah. Mm-hmm. Always. I'm mm-hmm. not sure why. Mm. Actually, I, re- I remember um, after giving birth, um, feeling really down in general about everything else. And it wasn't just about, you know, because of the number of things we had to do, like uh, take care of the baby and, and, yeah. and sleepless nights, right? It was not just that. It was just like feeling down. And you think, hey, I have such a healthy baby. Um, I shouldn't be feeling this way, kan? Yeah. Na, na, na. Um, bersyukur right but, yeah, yeah. but but you know that feeling and I remember um, during one of the postnatal visits I, I I went to see the obstetrician and the doctor said um, it, it, it could be hormonal sometimes postpartum depression is very yeah. real it could be hormonal um, and and if you uh, it, it sometimes goes away so you just have to monitor it closely but then if there was self-harm if you, you're thinking of harming yourself or harming the baby then yeah. Then you do, um, you know. She suggested that you you would then have to get um, professional or or medical help. Yeah. Mm. Ha- have I'm you thought of doing that? Not yet, because I'm I'm thinking it's like it's normal this way, and then my husband also think that this is only like I'm thinking too much. It's nothing at all. Mm-mm. I'm talking this to my husband also. Ah, uh, then he say maybe because I'm too stressed. I'm too mm-hmm. tired because I work from home. Then I need to take care of my baby too. Mm. Uh, Can so I just I, I chip in? Like, oh, sure, Lin. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I can totally relate to this. And I think there are a lot of warning signs, in my personal opinion, that you would need to reach out, to be honest, because it's, it's one thing to keep it to yourself and to just sort of self-blame and say that, I should be better than this. I shouldn't be, I should be a better mom. I shouldn't be feeling all these things. But yeah, yeah. what you are actually feeling is very, um, real. Com- very, very real. And, um, you know, a lot of mums go through it and we do need help. And yeah. I think if, I think, you know, it's, it's something that you should actually talk to someone about. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Because if, if we talk something to someone else, it's like, dia macam kurangkan kita punya beban tau. Mm. I think so. Uh, so if you terlalu pendam, I feel, if I pernah pendam sekali tu, so it's hard for me to get up. Mm. That's why sometimes I call my friends, I nangis-nangis, then after that, I'm okay. So I think we need to reach out something and I'm not sure, but we can't think too much. For me, I think we can't think too, too much. We are mother, so that is our responsibility to take care of our baby. Hmm. So, we cannot think that that baby is a, macam beban buat kita. I think so. Yeah, but I think um perhaps, <clears throat> I, I don't know how the other moms feel here today, but I think sometimes as, as mothers, we, we care so much about our babies, but I think there also needs to be a little bit of attention and time on on us. A happy mom, happy happy yeah. baby. That's, that's what I hear a lot. Lin, you, you had um, similar postpartum blues and anxiety. What worked for you? I think for for one thing, I can see that Fatini is kind of, you feel very guilty, right? And you feel yeah. like it should be no not such a big deal because we should be able to handle this. But mm. I think the, the thing is, it's a very, it's a very real and very, and it you shouldn't make it seem like it's not important yeah, because yeah. it's a big thing and you know, it should be addressed just like, and it's just as important as your baby's well-being. Your, your mm. own well-being is, is, is just as important. So I think it was coming to terms with that. Um, and for me, I think it was, a, it was hormonal a lot because yeah. there are some times that I would find myself doing things and then like just being very anxious about something, being very petty about things and just being very agitated, you know, shouting at people. Mm. And then I would step back and say, I've never been like this before. There yes, is something yes. wrong. And what is wrong is that my body is going through all these new things. And there's like all these all these hormones that are going through my body that has not been there before. So I think it's about reasoning with yourself and then just saying that, okay, how can I get help for, with, with this? So for me, um, what worked was when I felt I, I developed the support system. Um, so when I felt the more alone you feel, <laughs> the more you need to force yourself to go out, to, uh, to reach out. Yes. So 
is the is the hardest part because you know when you feel yes. so alone like no one understands right you feel like your oh my husband doesn't understand no one understands yes, no one's exactly. going through what's what I'm going through right exactly. then you need to it, it it's it's the hardest thing in the world but you just need to just reach out and talk to people like fellow moms or just to a helpline or something or or even get professional help i think it's it, it's a it's really necessary to do that yes yes mm. i think so because you think we always keep blame on us all they didn't believe me so they think mm. i just thinking too much my parents my husband they all think they all say that so i just keep that by myself only mm, it makes you think like you know people tend to say eh hey, orang lain pun yeah. pun ada anak kan yes exactly tak, takkan susah sangat right yeah. but but i think it's very individual and everyone copes in different ways everyone yes. finds different things difficult um and you've got a room here of four mothers but three yeah. of us have gone through that so it looks like we're the majority not yes. the minority <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, yeah. so so i think what i second what lin said you know reaching out and getting that support if you're not getting that support from maybe some of our closest family members then maybe some friends that we can speak to you said ringankan beban memang ringankan beban kan kalau boleh um you know, chit chat with your girlfriends and things oh, like yes. that but i think if you've gone to the extent of um 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 inflicting self harm and things like that you know i would definitely encourage you to seek a, a medical medical help um, i would try Mm, yes. Priscilla, you you've had four kids surely at some point in time you would have felt overwhelmed. I mean, three of us here have one kid. Yeah. You had four. <laughs> how do you, how, what do you do when you feel too much when it just gets too much for you? Okay, now that they are older, I can I can laugh about it, but um there were definitely times when they were younger, much younger that Um, uh, I feel like throwing them off the balcony, and I live on the twenty-first floor. Okay. <laughs> It's yeah. It, it does get really bad because there were times when, um, no matter what you do, they're crying, and and you don't know. You feel so inadequate because, um, you don't know what they want and how to to meet that need of theirs and they can't talk at that point but um i i just want to assure you uh, that it will get better it does and it will get better when they um when they can respond to you more uh they can talk to you and they, the first time they can call you mommy and uh, and and when they can actually kiss you back and and tell you they love you it it is what it it does get better Uh yeah so this um uh depressive moments does not last forever but i can imagine that probably it was, it's more difficult during covid times now because when when my kids were younger and i carried them uh everywhere in the in the sarong sling just like lin yeah and now uh, we meet we can meet other moms and we talk to each other and um Like like Fati uh, Tini said, we we share our burdens and we know that we are not in the same boat. But I guess now that um, you know everybody is stuck at home, um, it's probably more difficult. You feel so alone and the burden is greater, right? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, well, there's hope. We hear it from the mother of four. There is hope for the rest <laughs> of us. There is, there yes, is. There is hope. <laughs> My child is slightly older than yours, and I, I totally second what Priscilla said. It does get better, oh. and when you start hearing their voice, and and, and you know, in, in my case, my daughter, when you, she says "I love you" and she gives you a cuddle, it, oh. you, you 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 forget the past troubles yes. that you've had with her. <laughs> so there is hope. Hey Priscilla, um, you've had diabetes recti now. That that's a whole um a different issue altogether. Tell us what is diabetes recti. Okay, so uh, basically, the the our abdominal muscles um, they separate uh, during pregnancy to accommodate the growing uh, fetus inside. But um, I think in some people it doesn't completely go back. So yeah, so I have a permanently inverted uh, belly button. It doesn't go back in. <laughs> So, so yeah. for those of you who are tuning in and, and you're hearing this on Spotify, 
Um, find us on YouTube because we've got these images of um, Priscilla's um, inverted belly button if you want to have a look at what real there this is rectile like now this is what a real mother's belly belly is like right <laughs> not not those, those, those um, um, Hollywood glossed up um, um, bellies that don't, don't yeah. really exist unless you have um, five million dollars um, so yeah do you is this still the condition of your your belly button right now Yes, it is. This photo was taken yesterday. <laughs> so my youngest is coming to eight, eight years. Eight, yeah. So I have managed to reduce the um, separation from four finger width to two finger width now. Uh, so it's much better. I used to look like I was permanently um, about four months pregnant. Um, but it's, it's come back in better. But um, yeah, the belly button just doesn't go back in. Right. When you talk about the, is it just an aesthetic issue or is there, are there uh, other functional challenges that come with the separation of the abdominal muscles? Um, okay, aesthetics aside, uh, I do get um, uh, urine leakage when, you, when I sneeze, uh, when I cough sometimes. Um, and also, of course, like when I uh, we jump rope, or when I follow, my, bring my kids to uh, Jump Street, the trampoline park, um, I can just have gone to the toilet, I come back, two jumps, and I'm leaking again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel you, Priscilla, because same, I, I still go through the very same issues. Um, something that I think if, if anyone who had, bef if anyone had told me this, you know, uh, years before giving birth, I, w I thought there's something that happens only to older, much, much older ladies. I never thought it would happen to you know, women in their late 20s or 30s just because they've given birth. I know, right? You know, when my grandmother was like in her 80s and she asked me to buy sanitary pads for her, I thought... Um, aren't you menopause already? <laughs> and then she told me why and, and now I understand her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, wish, I wish somebody told us these things before uh, we, we actually um, entered into the world of motherhood. <laughs> Is there anything you can do to improve this condition? Um, exercise. Uh, uh, Kegel exercises for your pelvic floor. Yeah, it, it does get um, a bit, a bit better, like, yeah. But you got to be, um, basically you got to kind of like uh, squeeze your your muscle, like um, like you want to tahan kencing like that. Like say your your bladder is really full and and there's no toilet inside and you know or like you're stuck on the highway, balik kampung time and <laughs> and there's no toilet, no R and R inside and you're gonna hold your muscle, yeah. You squeeze that muscle and you hold it, um, yeah. That that kind that those exercise, yeah. And so, for, for our uh, audience tuning in, would doing this exercise um, in a week help the situation or in a month? I mean, how long does it take? I suppose I just want people to get an idea what sort of journey recovery or you know postpartum really means. Um, it takes discipline because it's not something you can like remember to do. Uh, I think um, I would say um, several weeks, maybe four to six weeks minimum, if you are consistent daily, um, I think you can uh, see some improvement. Yeah. Mm. Um, those of you who are tuning in, can you comment below if you've ever heard of dietesis recti before this chat? And if you've gotten better, we want to know how you did it. Um, that's a lot that we've been talking about. We're not even halfway through yet. Before we continue, quick shout out break for our sponsor Hanks. Their crispy chili is a great touch to any dish and comes in four flavors Korea seaweed, prawn, fish, and cuttlefish. Buy them online using the Shopee and Lazada links below or at your nearest Aeon or Tesco. Now let's get right back into it. Priscilla, apart from diastasis recti, um, has anything else troubled you postpartum? You know, like. like yeah, um, so uh, I have hemorrhoids. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So um, it's uh, the, the kind of swellings in your uh, anal, anal canal. Okay. Um, so it um, 
makes uh, bowel movement more difficult. Can, can, can yeah. I pause you there? What's hemorrhoids in Bahasa? Uh, <laughs> I can't think of it now. <laughs> <laughs> Got to Google it. <laughs> okay, all right. We'll pass on that one. Um, yeah, does anyone else in this room had hemorrhoids postpartum? No. No. Oh, okay. Right. So Priscilla, I'm with you. I had that as well. Oh, really? <laughs> it's it's painful. <gasps> okay. Mm. How does it feel? How does it feel? Oh, Priscilla, I'll, I'll let you describe how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to. It's like something blocking uh, the the inner. So uh, you, I, I often feel like uh, you. I need to go to the toilet for for big business, but um, it just doesn't come out easily. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Th- th- this just sounds a bit far fetched, but what has really worked for me is um, to apply. You can apply something like um, some sort of a lubricant. So I, I got this, um, you know, oil from a village man, literally. It helps, but I heard that Vaseline can also help if you apply it and then it sort of reduces the uh, size of the hemorrhoid and, and it makes things easier when you go to the toilet. You, you mean ru- ru- routinely apply it? Like, like if you have a cut or wound kind of thing? Yeah, you, you, but, you, but mine sort of went away. It wasn't, I, I think it's not as serious as yours. So it went away after I applied it like consistently for about oh. three weeks, every day, twice a day. I see. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, what thank you, it? producer. We've got, we've got a, a message in our, our chat. It says, hemorrhoids in Bahasa is boisir. That's a new word for me today. <laughs> but you, you didn't know about the application. What have you done though to try and, and, and help yourself? Um, I actually saw a, a doctor, uh, a surgeon, and uh, when I when I saw him, um, it was after right after I came back from um, uh, we went I went to Hawaii for my sister's wedding, and when we were there for uh, three weeks, we had no car, so we walked everywhere, and in that three weeks, um, uh, my bowel movements were very smooth. So when I told that to the surgeon, he said, there you are, you have your answer. You need to exercise more. Um, either you, you walk a lot, brisk walking, or you want to do jogging. Um, but that helps to move it along easier. Yeah. So now I diligently do at least 5km every day on my treadmill. Yeah, and of course, um, I also, um, I have to cut down, almost cut out uh, totally uh, on my rice. And instead, I take a lot of uh, veggies, uh, nuts, seeds, um, yeah, just so, so my plate is like uh, normal people's amount of rice, uh, that's my amount of veggie. <laughs> Mm. Wow, <laughs> yeah. that's a lot of veggie. I'm looking at a photo oh, that's yeah. showing on my screen. Oh, yeah. I hate veggie. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously hate veggie. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, Lynn, are you a veggie person, Lynn? I am, but I'm not sure if... Uh, that, 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 is, that is a lot of vegetables. Wow. <laughs> it looks super healthy though, and it actually looks quite delicious. <laughs> Yeah, you've mixed yeah. it up with fruits and nuts. Yeah, nuts and stuff. And this uh, one you yeah. eat twice a day? Uh, regularly, yeah, yes. Uh, of course, I, I eat um, chicken, fish, whatever else, lah, but not uh, no rice. Ah. Right, right. Unless it's really yummy, you know, once in a while, like nasi biryani kind of thing, yeah. Ooh. Or there's a yummy rendang, yeah. <laughs> and this diet has helped with the bowel movement? <laughs> yes, it has. Especially the seeds and the nuts, yeah. Wow. Well, it sounds um like a really inconvenient condition to have. <laughs> I want to touch about the walking, right? You said five kilometers mm. a day. Mm. Um, I I read uh this as part when I was trying to find some answers and solutions to my postpartum issues. I read a lot in talk about walking. How walking helps the woman recover in terms of uh many. Issues or pelvic issues that you know, diatheses and even um, hemorrhoids, and also for postpartum um, depression, it seems like this walking really helps. And I don't know if anyone else is doing. Uh, Lena, are you doing those walks in your neighborhood? Um, I think I, I'm well as far as MCO is concerned, and I'm allowed to. <laughs> I I do bring Jiren for walks every morning and evening, if possible. Um, mm. 
and I think it just helps to get out of the house. Um, mm. You know, because if you're cooped up in the house all the time, especially now if we're in lockdown, um, you tend to be in your own head a lot. So for me, it's, it's more of a mental thing to get out of the house and go go walking. And, and also, it's good exercise. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. So oh we've got that photo very cute of you ah, and Jiren so <laughs> walking and you have him on a sling. Yeah, he loves his walks. He doesn't allow me to go. He he doesn't go a day without asking for walks now. So <laughs> yes, I do too. Mm-hmm. I, I would love my walk too if I was in that sling and you know and not having to do much much um, other than being carried around. Walking. <laughs> Sightseeing. Yeah, but can't can't underrate the power of walks. You know, for for the physical yeah, and for yes. the mental in in postpartum recovery. Yeah. Um, Lynn, but in terms of walking and etc., you've had symphysis pubis dysfunction as well. Mm. That's that's a long term, and I can see Tini frowning. Like, what on earth is symphysis pubis dysfunction? <laughs> Lynn, enlighten the rest of us here. I, I'm lucky because my condition actually slowly went away after I gave birth. But a lot of mums actually have the, have this post um have this when they're pregnant and then it goes on for years after as well. So SPD, um, which is that symphysis pubic dysfunction, it happens when the ligaments of you know your, your at, near the pelvic bone actually becomes really relaxed when you're pregnant because of uh, you know the relaxant hormone and it, it's so relaxed that your pelvic bone actually is misaligned almost mm. and it f- is super painful it feels like it could this it could basically dislocate any time mm. so um i had it really badly i think right before i delivered a child because he was a big baby so it pressed down on the pelvic bone and um, basically it was so bad that I couldn't get out of bed in the morning um, and I couldn't walk in the last few months I had to basically just stay in bed because it was excruciating pain just walking it felt like my whole pelvis was about to collapse mm. and it was also one of the reasons why I had to do a CSEC um, with, with Jiren um, but it, you know, it's it, you have trouble sleeping when you have this condition um, when mm-hmm. you're pregnant. And the funny thing is, you know, when when you're pregnant, you can't sleep on your back, right? Because um, it's, uh, you know, they say that it will restrict blood flow to the baby. So, mm-hmm. and I couldn't sleep on my side mm-hmm. because it felt like my pelvis was about to <laughs> dislocate. So. I had to sleep sitting up, <laughs> basically, for oh. a few months. So that was uh, quite... That would have been so hard. Tough. Yeah, super uncomfortable. You, you're getting such little sleep as it is, and then you got to sleep sitting up. Yeah, yeah. But Lynn, I'm almost envious hearing... If you, I, I know it sounds sadistic in a way, but I'm almost envious because I had those symptoms when I was pregnant. And I went through a vaginal birth, natural birth. Um... Uh, the obstetrician was aware and, and I, 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 I would say that, you know, it was entirely a fault. I, I think there's not enough said and known about symphysis pubis dysfunction or or another name for it. It's pelvic um, pelvic girdle pain, if I'm not wrong. Yes, PGP. yeah. yeah. And not, n- nobody in, in my circle or in my entire life has ever heard of it. Mm. And so um, I had that pain. I, I had trouble sleeping. I couldn't toss and turn when I was pregnant. And um, then when, when, when it was time to give birth, I didn't do the cesarean because I was not given that advice. I had vaginal birth. Now, what was really scary was right after birth, I lost sensation. I lost control. I, I, I lost absolute movement, waist down. I couldn't mm. move. It, it, it was stuck. Mm. And, and, and when, when I was tr- at hospital and trying to tell you know, everyone else, hey, you know, I can't walk and something is not right. Some, something is badly wrong because all the cesarean mothers were walking around and uh, here I am, vaginal birth, but I was still in bed, unable to move. Um, couldn't even go to the toilet or to change myself. And, and at that time, the hospital um, staff said to me, hey, you just had a baby, what do you expect? It takes longer, you know, it takes time to recover. It was only after one month that I knew something was seriously wrong and I needed help. And the worst part was, I don't know about you, Lynn, but there was no one to help because all the physios couldn't help, and for me at least, and I there was no term. So I was basically on Google every night trying to search for, um, you know, mother given birth cannot walk. Like, like hmm. just didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Did you, 
I, I think that that does contribute to the, that sense of loneliness and, and thinking that you're alone, this struggle. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's it's so important to know about all these things before you get pregnant, right? And I had no idea as well. <clears throat> but basically, my, my um, doctor did tell me in the final months that... I also tried to go through natural birth, by the way. Um, oh, but right. I couldn't, I, you know, I basically I had zero dilation, even though I had full contractions. <laughs> so that's why I needed to do an emergency C-sec mm. as well. But a blessing she did, in disguise. A blessing in disguise. It was, um, but she did tell me that my, I have a danger of my pelvic rupturing and collapsing during birth. So mm. I was told that a few weeks before I went into labor. It's scary, of course. It's you know, but mm. I'm sure you would have preferred to be warned about that. Yes, absolutely. Before. So yeah. So um my daughter is now eight and a half years, and guys, I'm still recovering. Um, but I'm so lucky I started out with a batch of women I found online, an online support group. And many of the women are still in a wheelchair today. So I'm so glad to be walking around today and 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 free of the wheelchair. But um, what's really worked for me a, a two, a, is is really manual therapy. So a, a, a guy um, in in Melbourne, Australia, he's now retired. So this is not a sponsored mention. His name is Gary Miritis. I, I'm I'm saying this here for just in case there's any mother out there who's desperately needing help. Um, he gave me an in, inexpensive massage, very very painful massage. But the idea was to release the spasm of the pel the muscles surrounding the pelvic girdle and 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 that was a breakthrough because after his treatment it was the first time that i could literally walk without feeling like a baby about to drop out of my vagina um and and years later um although i, I still have the hip pain and the pain in my thighs I, I i many treatments didn't work and i finally found somebody in in penang his name is kenneth he's a bone setter again not sponsored um painful um treatment but he, he, he his treatment has made me um uh enabled me to to actually exercise and, and walk things that that i think many of us take for granted before we give birth so um i have to to mention these two things because i think for people with spd or pgp you 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 do so much research you try out so many treatments and and you know i, I just want to save you time and save you all that pain by telling you that these are the things that worked for me lynn in your case what worked for your spd I did go through physical therapy as well. So I went to this uh, physiotherapy set, um, a few physiotherapy sessions and they did help, but they were quite temporary. So you feel like it's relieved, but then after a while, at that time, the load kind of is still there. So it comes back. So for me, it was, it was temporary relief, but it was, I think, f um, physical therapy does help. It's proven to help. Mm. Yeah. Um, for for the benefit of Tini and Priscilla, uh, the pain that that we experience, I don't know about Lynn, but it's like chili buddy in your pelvic bones. Ooh. It is this burning pain, you know, and, and you, you want to douse it with, with I don't know, fire extinguisher or something, but it just doesn't go away. It's perpetual that twenty four seven. So so that yeah. that's what it was. And it the, clicks and when it clicks it's super it's excruciating pain. <laughs> Yeah, mm. and and so that pain for you has gone away completely, Lin. Yeah, it, it has. I'm lucky then that way. Yeah. Are you able to to like you know go for a jog if you wanted to now? Yes, I am. I'm back to normal. Um, so very lucky. <laughs> That's fabulous. That means the physio and mental therapy has has really helped you. Um, Lin, have you had any physical pain other than SPD? Uh, you mean postpartum or yeah postpartum like you know with 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 um yeah do you have I like think, back pain or anything like that i think yeah. nothing more than all the mums would have experienced so um i'm quite a tall um person so i have i have recurring back ache neck aches and aches everywhere <laughs> and because you know I, Jiren is quite a big baby as well so and I do like to sling him to carry him um, you know I, I get neck ache I go to my physiotherapy and their advice is don't carry your baby so much and I'm like no that's not gonna happen <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Priscilla you know it's you, you can totally relate as well so yeah um, I think I, there there is a lot of um, 
challenges, physical challenges being a mum. Hmm. Yeah, mm. I do have the pain, the back pain feel also. Mm. So I can't do like a hard job or too heavy job. If I wash dish also, mm. it it take too much time. So I was like, oh my god, so it's so hard lah. Sangat sangat sakit. So you need to lay down. Then then okay, baru you boleh buat kerja lain pula. But the so, pain for you, Tini, is it lower back or upper back or middle, mid back? Lower, lower. Lower? Yeah. Dekat pinggang lah? Ah, dia ada pinggang tapi dia belakang yeah. tu kan. I yes. rasa sebab because of the bios kot. Kan I emergency scissor. Oh, uh, right, maybe right. Maybe I guess lah. So it's so hard. I can't do a lot of job right now. I I don't think it's just the views because I didn't have the views. I have the pain oh, yeah. too. <laughs> so I'm not sure why. <laughs> it's so hard. So I think in my case, um, having manual therapy helps, and having heat packs, you can try that. Oh, heat pack, yeah. Uh, ta- but it doesn't go away completely, like like Lin said. You know, it's sometimes a relief and then it comes back. Yeah, I, I just do like I put hot water. Yeah. Yeah, then I just put bear <laughs> Thing like that I have a tip If you can get like a baseball From Daiso or something like that oh, And really? you can just roll it On the bed oh, Or on, a, on the wall that, that really helps Yeah ah, okay, okay. Would it be try. better to roll it On the floor than the bed? Because the bed's yeah, soft on the, right? Yeah on the floor If if you can't tahan so much Then <laughs> bed, <laughs> But on the floor On the wall is the best Yeah mm. uh-huh. Okay mm. I will try Priscilla, what about you? Any 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 bodily aches? Um, no, I don't have back, uh, back pain. Even though I carried my all four of them in the sling until they were, like, um, close to fifteen kilos. All right, uh, yeah, I carried them for very long <laughs> because I tell myself that they are not going to be so little forever. Um, but uh, the only thing I have is that when I arch backwards a bit too much, like when you want to lean back to wash your hair, then I feel like a little pinch uh, around the mid back, just at that one spot. Uh, so um, I just have to avoid that that one position. Apart from that, uh, no, I don't have back ache. <laughs> But that sounds yeah. like um, that pinch doesn't sound like nothing. I think that's the thing about us mothers, right? We are so quick to dismiss. Ah, this one nothing lah. But actually, the yeah. we we're, we're having all these things um um clearly from having having the little one, you know, or yeah. little ones. I I had that ever since um after the f- the first baby, which is a cesarean. So I don't know for sure whether it is due to the um epidural, uh, but. Yeah, it was definitely after my first baby. And it was worse uh, in the early stages, like soon after birth. But uh, over the years, it has reduced to, like I said, uh, like a small pinch uh, only in that position. And for that, for that split second, once I, I don't arch backwards, then it's fine. So no funny yoga poses for you, Priscilla? No, and my kids keep challenging me to do, you know, follow them in their gymnastics, do a bridge. Oh, I say, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I keep telling them this is not a good time to go to hospital. <laughs> I, I'm wondering, ha- have these um, postpartum challenges put anyone off from having baby number two? Or giving you anxiety <laughs> no. about having baby number two? No. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we have different <laughs> opinions here in this room. No. So Tini says, no matter what, I will have baby. You know, you you yeah, came down. You know, when you see your baby laugh, and every every time he do something new, you feel like, oh, I'm a proud mom. See my baby, she he can do this one. Oh my god, so cute. Then you feel like, oh, you want a new kid, you want a new baby, yeah. But sometimes when you stress, you I don't want a baby anymore. I don't want a baby anymore. <laughs> I always like that. So when I'm happy, I, I always want a new baby. Something like that. Mm, Lynn, you, you disagree. <laughs> I think, I, I, I don't know whether it's, you know, normal or not, but I I love my kid so much and, and, you know, it's completely, it makes it completely worth it seeing him laugh and all that now. Mm. But mm, I'm yes, really yes. not keen to put myself through mm. all of that. All of that again, you know. Mm. If, I mean, if I if I do want another kid, there's always adoption. There's always another way to. Mm. I mean, I, I know it's I know it's a sensitive topic or whatever not, but you know there are lots of kids out there who who need to be adopted. Mm. Um, but 
I think, you know, I, I don't regret um, having a baby. I just don't think that I would want to go through that whole process again. Personally, mm. it's a very personal choice. Yeah. It is, it is, and sometimes I wonder maybe, maybe the less we know, and then we go through it. Because sometimes I, I look back and I think, if I knew I couldn't walk for this amount of time, or may may risk not walking to have a baby, I'm not sure if I had, I would have the courage to actually mm-hmm. go through that. But Priscilla, you've had four. You felt, you know, um, at at your lowest times, you felt that you've had enough, but you ended up having more. Has, Even has now. The joy- even now, I get I get asked when is number five coming, okay? <laughs> and I say it's no longer possible. <laughs> I'm I'm very blessed to have had very um relatively easy and uneventful pregnancies. Um, it's uh not nothing, no no pain, no diffi- hardly any difficulty. It's just um you know it's just weight gain. Uh. After that, um, of course, it takes time to lose weight, but it wasn't uh, that bad yeah, within a year. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'm very blessed to have had relatively easy deliveries too. Uh, so, But I know of friends who have very, very difficult times and it really scars them that, you know, they say, that's it, I, I don't want another one. Yeah, one is enough. <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess it's, the journey is very different for, for every woman. Yes, yeah. Do you think yeah. any of um the, the 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 nasty things, you know, that, that some women, some of us had had to go through, do you think any of them are actually preventable? Um mm, I I think um to start off with if you have a uh if you're in good physical health and you have a strong core, um I think it can uh, prevent some of the yeah the nasties like maybe I, I think like for DR for example if uh, my core was stronger um, perhaps uh, it wouldn't be you know like this yeah well, what what's core I mean I know it's a very common term now core exercises but for mm-hmm, any mm-hmm. woman out there listening who is mm-hmm. not quite sure what core exercises <laughs> do, do you want to elaborate um uh, to put it simply uh your your abdominal muscles yeah so um you, you don't have to build a six pack but if you uh it, it's uh stronger meaning um uh i don't know you can hold hold maybe you can hold your pee longer i don't know <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> It's like the background of like yoga and Pilates and all that, right? You need yeah. a strong core and that correct, will hold, hold everything else up. That's right. Um, yeah, and it's very important that you develop mm. that before you get pregnant so that you, yeah. it makes life a lot easier. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, w- what's your advice, you know, other than and doing co- just having strong core, do, do you ladies here have any advice for women who are thinking of getting pregnant or who are already pregnant? What what would your advice be? Should I go first? <laughs> <laughs> then go for it. Be, be prepared for your entire life to change. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, I I would my my advice would be just to be completely prepared. I mean, you wouldn't undertake a challenge like you know you go hiking Mount Kinabalu or something. You you you'll be physically prepared, mentally mm. prepared. You'll do a lot of research and stuff like that. So this mm, is yeah. this is not a small challenge. This is not Mount Kinabalu. This is like the toughest challenge of your life, mm, probably. Mm, exactly. So you just just make sure that you're very educated about everything, about the whole process of being pregnant and about giving birth and about raising a child. And before jumping into it, basically, um, there's... Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm very passionate about this because there's a lot of pressure on women nowadays to bear children, right? Um, mm. It's super unfair. I mean, it. Well, <laughs> I think you know. <laughs> I think that there's a there's a lot of pressure that that's yes. been um, that you that people put on us to just have a baby, have two babies, have mm. lots of babies. And, you know, if you're not prepared for your body and your life to change in that way, you don't need to do it, mm. basically. Yeah, I, that's what I believe in. Yeah. I agree. Totally agree. Mm. Like, I love my grandmother to bits, but she used to tell me, I had eight. You have one? Come on, that's a week. 
<laughs> yeah, you need to prepare mental, physical, and everything. You need mm. to do a lot of research before you having a baby. You need to see is it are you ready to go to a next level of your life, a new things that you never do before this. So it's something new. So for me, I do do a research a lot also. Mm. So before I'm I'm getting pregnant, I do check is it okay to have a baby at my age. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my friend all have a baby. So I think. Oh, maybe it's okay for me to have a baby. No, you can't think that. So you need to prepare. You you ask your husband, is it okay to have a baby? How many baby you want? Uh, <laughs> me and my husband also thinking about that also. So we want we don't want a baby like, ah, uh, okay, this year a uh, one baby, next year two baby. Oh no no no, we just thinking like we think, ah, uh, it's like financial, ah, uh, mm. mental, physical. So we think ah uh, we can't have a baby right now. So we need to. Uh, what you say? Macam I can banyak masalah. Mm-hmm. Like I'm thinking too much. So I say my, my husband, let me relax first. Mm. So then we can think about that again. Mm. <laughs> Something mm. like that. I I love yeah. how you have that open communication with your husband, and I think that that partnership um, is often yeah. again not spoken of uh, out mm. there, where it's a joint decision. It's it's, it's it's a it's like it's like starting a business together, right? Yeah, except yeah. that this this is yeah. way more commitment than a business. Yes. Yeah, Because my husband, and, my husband, and you can't return the goods, right? Yes, yes. Because <laughs> he like to he like to do a lot of research, so he helped mm. me a lot actually. Mm. That's why. So I'm thankful him actually even when he do something like ah uh, too annoying for me but I'm thankful he for being with me. Yeah, he he sounds very supportive of of all that you're yeah, going through. Yeah. Priscilla, any any last um, words for for our Asian women out there? I I was now looking back on my experiences, I would say that um it's good to be in uh the best physical health that you can be. Uh, but at the same time, I, I think there's no way to be um, absolutely prepared and say, okay, that's it. This is the right time. I want a baby now because things don't often go according to your plan. And um, if you are, um, if, uh, or like if you've married, you marry late. Yeah, uh, I think nowadays early thirties is a uh, is the norm, right? Uh, norm age to get married. Um, I would also uh, advise uh, don't don't think too much and don't wait too long because I I know of so many friends who you know they plan and they they plan so much into so great detail. I need uh you know how much money in my bank first, a house, a car, uh, my job must be stable first, and then okay, I'm ready to have a baby. And then when they start trying. Um, it it's not so easy. Things don't just just happen. Yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, you know, um, yeah. I I I had um, some difficulty in actually conceiving also, but that's another story. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So don't think too much here. Yeah. Right. So don't think too much for yeah. you. Um, more research from from Fatini. Um, definitely get yourself very very prepared. Yes. From Lin and then also from Priscilla, get your core up and strong. And I think Lin and I are nodding nodding away when when Priscilla was saying getting your core <laughs> really strong because we didn't do that. Um, fantastic. Well, that's all we have today for today's episode. If you enjoyed tuning in, give us a thumbs up or tag at the Asian Woman on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok. Um, I love to see you at our next Real Chats episode. Until then, take care and fully embrace the Asian woman in you. Bye.